Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, hello everybody. I'm Xern with XC Gaming, and I'm bringing you today Gothic 3. Actually, me myself, as a fan of the Gothic series, I've played this RPG since well, I believe I was since it was first released. Maybe one or two years after the first part was released, so that will be around 2000. And actually, uh, I actually love uh, love the series for its well, at least at that time, for the great voice acting and uh, and the great atmosphere and the good story. And it really, you know, managed to suck me into the world. Of course, a lot of you know Gothic 3 as one of the most buggy and unfinished productions ever made uh, in history, probably uh, for an RPG. The rumor at the time, or the rumor, actually the confirmed story at the time was that Joe would want it to make an easy cash-in of the Gothic uh, series after Gothic 2 managed to be quite successful in the uh, Nordic, uh, or the Germanic countries actually. So we mean, uh, of course, uh, Germany, Austria, uh, Switzerland, etc. And they actually forced the team of Piranha Bytes to quickly release or finish the game after about three years of production and they just weren't ready and they also told that against Joe Wood and they actually that actually came to a row to a fight and they didn't want to release the game at that stage uh, but Joe Wood still forced them to do it to make a sort of playable end product and that is actually the thing that got dumped into the consumers face which was very disappointed but they knew the story behind it so uh, actually then the community rose up and started finishing and adapting uh, and improving the game uh, throughout through community patches um, those of you who are familiar with that you might actually see that this is not a community patched version I pre-ordered Gothic 3 in 2006-2007 of course as a fanboy of the Gothic series and uh, I was really eager to play it and then I actually received the game and <laughs> the game was unplayable. The game would just spontaneously crash directly at the first gameplay scene which you will see uh, later on and they actually rushed out a Gothic 3 release patch to address some of the issues that at least the game was in between brackets PLAYABLE so it would run at a very chunky 20 FPS and if you didn't have enough memory you would get out of memory errors uh, constantly which were really really annoying. This game didn't really get playable until the 1.07 and the 1.08 patches. And the official update support actually goes until the 1.12 patch which you are seeing here right now. Why have I made the choice to do the 1.12? Because I want to bring you the original thing. The original um, sort of shoddy unfinished product. Uh, this is also the state in which I finished the game uh, a few years back and I want just want to show you what the original game was all about. I highly recommend of course installing the community patch because it fixes a lot of issues with quests you can't complete and it offers a little bit more balanced experience even though I don't feel the changes are that incredibly dramatic. It offers you a lot of nice new extra functionality and a great effort has been gone into it to actually make the game well, so, um, yeah, that's a little bit about history, of course, of Gothic 3, and uh, I want to show you this amazing game, this hilarious game, this, uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe I just should stop explaining, maybe we should just dive into it and see, actually, what Gothic 3 is all about. So, we're starting up a new game, the loading screen will actually take some time, maybe I could also uh, during my gabbing uh, I could have uh, told you this of course in the loading screen but yeah um, Gothic 3 of course continues on Gothic 2 where the heroes come from the island of Corinus uh, all the way to the mainland of Mertana to find it shambled and being warred over by the orcs and actually Mertana is being occupied by the orcs and it's up to you to save or to help the orcs, of course. So it's also a little bit of a moral choice system, but of course it's not really finished. So that you won't see any big changes in the whole world except for the fact that the orcs will still occupy the land. Or you will actually kick them out. So that's the only change, of course. And people will be a little bit pissed with you. So the moral choice or the feelings you will have 
uh, with that are actually more with you, the player, than uh, than in the game. Yep. So we'll get an uh, intro sequence. I'll uh, let it roll, and uh, you guys have to see it. I will try not to talk through it. So uh, try, of course. But yeah, this game is is interesting. I liked playing it. Uh, it's being compared a whole lot to uh, the great Oblivion game from uh, Oblivion 4, of course. Or for Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion, that's the good name. And it's totally not comparable to Oblivion. Yeah, in the fact that it's an RPG, but it's so different. Alright, here's the intro sequence. Here we go. Uh, yeah, they fucked up the game, basically. I'm on a boat, motherfucker, take a look at me! Diggy hole. And we're in the fight. Here we go, guys. That was the intro sequence without a whole lot of talking, of course. You will hear a lot of moaning and groaning during this uh, let's play, so... Uh, oh, there we go. The fighting system, as you can see, is not really superbly uh, extensive in the fact that you don't have a whole lot of moves, or at least a whole lot of moves that are uh, superbly effective. Just mashing the button, so hack and slashing, is the best way to play through it, actually. We have to... Liberate this town. Here we go. Boss, I will kill you. Alright, boss. Kill, kill, kill. Over here, right? Stabby time. There we go. Ha, killed you. Charge! Oh, failed. 
Mora. Yeah, you're actually a Mora in the eyes of the orcs. Die. There we go. I leveled up. Wow, that's actually fast. Um. Oh. Oh. Fuck that. Yeah, they have the like these windmill attacks. You can do it later on as well because the fighting animations for most of the models here are actually uh, exactly the same. And he is ooh. They cornered a scout. Look at that. Did you see? Uh, do you see the increase in damage all of a sudden uh, my sword does on these orcs? Just watch when I hit them. See, it's like you're constantly critting. It's ridiculous because that's one of the arrows which is uh, accompanying the uh, uh, the yeah the game. And this uh, can happen multiple times, actually. Of course, not when you're being multiple hitted by any enemy, of course. That's some, one of the things they improved uh, versus Gothic 1 and 2. Gothic 1 and 2 was just a solo hit game, so you, when the one you focused actually was the one you, uh, you were only hitting. So, yeah. And we have liberated our Dia, the Eye Warrior. There we go. Haha! -ha. Let's drink a potion before something, uh, a boulder falls from the sky. Alright, if I can... Bald fat guy. Redduck. What is Redduck? There are a lot of forests here. Maybe we should. And what a neck you've got. Anyway, uh, you we want always want to kill the boss. He has a map, so as soon as you get that map, it makes navigation, of course, a lot easier. There we go. Uh, take all the weapons you want to sell. Everything you have unlimited inventory space, so uh, yeah, take everything you can get. This is basically a looting game. You want to loot everything. They have a lot of gold, and you at a certain point you're just so full up uh, that you you can do everything you want, basically. Um, also chest everywhere, check all the houses and stores and homes, you can do that now. Uh, of course in some areas you have to be careful because if you're caught trespassing in some areas they will get awfully pissed at you and I don't know how well that actually go will go away, so yeah, we'll probably uh, get to see that. This guy doesn't mind me stealing anything of it now, uh, let's just say it's payment for saving his fat ass. Here we go. Go away! I d ah. Jumping is alt. I forgot that. Healing potions and a teleporter stone. Uh, every village in general has a teleporter stone somewhere in the area. And that teleporter stone will take you directly to that village or somewhere in the vicinity of it. And that's... Damn it. You can actually read the lecterns to gain some kind of experience in some forms. I'll just show you some of the menus. M is your map, of course. Then you have recipes, alchemy formulas, books and letters, and yeah, the documents. And the forging blueprint, because yes, you can forge in this game. It's not very uh, exciting or anything. Here you have a reputation uh, area. My reputation with the rebels is now 2. Reputation with the orcs, rangers, hashishin, and the nomads. Um, Hashishin and Nomads is actually is this area. It's the it's the desert. It's huge. It's really huge. It's a beautiful area, by the way. And the orcs are spread throughout this land and actually this land. So that will be Nordmar. One of the things I actually already said is um, oh yeah, one more thing. If the names are green, that means they're aligned. Uh, they're goodly aligned with you. This name is sort of blank or yeah, I already say it. Cream colored, and that means they're indifferent towards you. And yeah, green just means good, and red means that they're hostile. So 
always if you find someone with a red name uh, avoid them they'll probably attack you on sight um, yeah uh, what I was saying this game was actually kind of unfinished and you can really uh, notice that in I will take the map with that um, actually you can notice it in this area because Mertana is occupied by the orcs what I just did to Ardea you can do basically in every of these towns and they just have some quests in and around the town and after that you will abandon the town and you will probably never have anything to do there anymore there are maybe one or two towns a quest traces back to so it's not spread out through the land which you can really see that makes the game unfinished because gothic is known to have ties everywhere in the land and you have to go everywhere to basically do something a quest for someone to pick up something so that's basically uh, that's basically it uh, f for the game. Uh, the game feels most finished and most polished when you get to Nordmar. Nordmar actually has a whole lot of quests which uh, range from one camp to the other, and there are people uh, running around. It's, it feels just more alive like than this. This is all keep to uh, keep to yourself and be normal. Oh look, black robar. We can smoke weed. Got weed. There we go. And it actually heals you, so they actually think weed is awesome, and they kept it throughout the whole game. So yeah, loot everything is my uh, my advice. Didn't this guy have a weapon? By the way, I pummeled him. Actually, uh, doesn't seem uh, deem it necessary. Oh yeah, by the way, you'll probably catch me doing this a whole lot because yeah, I need to save. You need to save this game a lot. If you die, you have to continue again from your uh, last save game. So. We have to save a lot. Why don't you quick save? Well, I don't need 1,200 saves at the end of the whole uh, the whole shebang. You can sleep on a bed to pass the night, day, dawn, dusk, whatever. And, uh, yeah. Then you get all kinds of ingredients now in files. And the nice thing is you're not limited in inventory space, as I have said. Oh, yeah, chests. If chests are red, as you just saw, you have to use a lockpick. Some chests are more difficult, so you need a higher lockpicking skill, but that's just basically it. You do not have like a lockpicking game like in Gothic 1. And I believe you also don't have that anymore in Gothic 2, but yeah. This game actually, in terms of looks, still looks quite good in uh, in my opinion the game uh, has a kind of a crisp feel some of the textures aren't really of course very very nice but yeah you can't say it actually looks very ugly it's nice the atmosphere has been placed very well and uh, the detail the amount of detail is actually quite good for uh, for a game which is initially uh, which has initially not been finished yet there we have our first recipe, it's for a healing potion. And we have a bookshelf. Read the bookshelves, people, because if you read those bookshelves you get extra alchemy points or whatever skill points. Oh yeah, I didn't show you all the uh, menus. B is your magic uh, inventory and it shows you all the spells you can actually uh, learn. Magic of Dominance is Inos's territory. Inos, the god of light and the god of, uh, of, of order and sanctimoniousness. Transformation Magic uh, is actually uh, an ice and water. It's actually Adonis's territory, which is the god of balance and wisdom. And the Summoning Magic, and of course, Poison Terror, you can already see Summon Demons, Summon the Army of Darkness, is of course Beliar's territory, which is the god of darkness and all things and natural. So, yep. And that's uh, and where do you learn these types of magic? Well, if you have enough skill points to spend, you can actually learn these types of magic at an altar. But you have to; these altars are, mm, in some cases, quite difficult to find. Oh yeah, just look at the jumping mechanic. Ooh. Well, I haven't seen a lot of people uh, who can actually move around in midair, but uh, I'm special, so I can do it. Raw steel, that's good. So we can use that to forge something. Electrum. Damn it. So we can't learn anything. Uh, but you can get, uh, I think, smithing, like uh, smithing intelligence from the uh, from the book stands, and you can get alchemy and ancient knowledge. And the ancient knowledge is required for the magic in the game. 
we go. Running actually costs stamina. Stamina is something new introduced uh, into this game. You can actually increase it, but generally, stam investing in stamina points is the most useless thing you can probably do in this game. Ham. Yes, and a ladle, 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 ladle. Here we go. Bread. Bread is also nice. Bread and wine. Slave. Here we go. Slaves. Oh, look at that. This is a, maybe something blasphemous to do, but of course you won't get smitten if you do so. I just loot everything at one of these altars. This is actually an altar of Inos, as you might see, of the very righteous figure and the helmet and everything. Baliar looks kind of freakishly. And I haven't actually found an Adna shrine because you have to learn that from their own people because Adna shrines are not readily available in the whole area. As you can see the sites are actually quite good but the rendering and maybe you can see the line go across the landscape. Yeah, that's the adaptive rendering. Uh, PCs in 2006 were in, this was actually quite an advanced game for the time so yeah. Ancient knowledge. Anyway, uh, yeah, the it was quite an advanced game. Piranha Bytes actually managed to make uh, their own uh, to make their own engine, and this is actually the result of it. And I think it's quite impressive for uh, not a hugely big company uh, to make such a well-looking uh, engine. And it's actually also the same base for the game Two Worlds. I don't know if you uh, if any of you have played that. Probably some of you have. I haven't. Maybe that's a little bit of blasphemy because, mm, yeah, whatever uh, movies and everything I saw from Two Worlds, yeah, it's not that, not that great. Personally, it didn't really appeal to me. It, it seemed a little bit stiff and stodgy. Now I won't say anything about this game because this game is stiff and stodgy. But yeah, I have, I don't know, it just feels better. Look at that. We have a rusty sword, rusty two hander. Slave and a warrior. Oh god, I forgot to loot that. I am so bad. Oh, there's also another one. Another one of those things. Scout. Scout! Yes, a brush and a hammer. Is that anything you can do with it? No. But you can sell them, so yeah. Money is money, right? Actually, what I really liked about Gothic 1 is in the trading system. Everybody keeps a certain amount of ore, so yeah, that would be like cash in your pocket. And that's quite enough realistic, so if you sell things, you actually either have to barter, so trade, or you have to make sure that, uh, you have to make sure that you can, yeah, trade up to a certain amount. This game, however, everybody has enough gold with them, so, yeah. And uh, if you trade something in, you'll always receive money for it people have limitless pockets or at least traders have set pieces I can take them with me halberds quite effective weapons uh, what I've actually learned in this game is you're very quite kind of superior if you take a very long weapon because yeah you can keep enemies at bay quite easily and as soon as you strike you hit multiples uh, very easily of course strength of weapon is also kind of uh, kind of interesting to see my first blueprint I can make a broadsword. Probably not carry it yet because I'm just too freaking weak. Um, let's see in my skills. What do we have more? Here's your skill uh, tab. I actually have Master of Two Blades. What? No. I would almost say so. What? Sorry. Orc Slayer. That's a trait which I've gotten from the sword because the sword has the Orc Slayer trait. Uh, these traits can actually be uh, be on a weapon. So yeah. Here we see my strength, hunting skill, ancient knowledge, thieving, alchemy, life, energy, endurance, and mana. Hunting skill is actually something I really recommend to upgrade and to get these skills because every time you kill an animal it will just waste and rot. That would be a shame. So get the hunting skill, get the skins, and actually uh, upgrade that stuff. Here, improve armor, hone blade, prospect weapons, and ore, and all kinds of stuff. This, these skills you won't learn until really yeah, later in the game. Thieving skills, nice optional extra if you like to be a thief. Either try and specialize in these, uh, lock picking, uh, you should really, really do that because, yeah, it always annoys me to death uh, if I have to walk past the chest which I can't pick. 
Alchemy scales are also a nice bonus extras. And these are very handy. Acrobatics and Endurance of the Wolf. I really uh, suggest you learn that one together with this one, Poison Resistance, because there are some animals who actually uh, give you weakness and poison. And these two skills are very valuable to learn. So as soon as you find a tutor who can learn you those skills, learn them, I'd say. Look at that, apples. Too bad it's a one-way looting system, so I have to loot every apple. Loot. 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 Yes. In the last few chests, and then we can piss off. I'm actually uh, surprised that the game runs this well, actually. So yeah, and that's uh, a whetstone. Actually, you need to sharpen your blades on it. As soon as you have learned to sharpen blade uh, skill, you can make every weapon a little bit stronger by just sharpening on a whetstone. See, missing skill, hone blade. You can sharpen almost every blade, so yeah, then you can get a little bit of extra damage from your weapon. That's a, that's actually a nice trait. Hamla has nothing to say anymore to me. Let's see if these guys, everyone with a name by the way in this game, uh, probably has something important to say. That's one of the rules of fist or trade in this game. There we go, overwrite the existing game. Sure, whatever. Milton! What a whiny bitch. Okay. I don't know. Another fine mess we've got ourselves into. What happened here? Why not? The orcs have won their war against King Robot. And now the orcs are sweeping through the land, enslaving the humans. But most of all, I would like to know what happened to Preston. Okay. So they want to know what happened to Lester. Well, of course, this is of course spoiler material, so people, yeah, okay, playing through this whole game is actually a spoiler, but you're actually, uh, the idea is to search for him yourself, so. Actually, I still think the game is kind of beautiful, just to look at, uh, in terms of uh, area, foliage, and yeah. The general beauty of the game is actually quite good. Be on the lookout for really rare plants. Some of the plants actually boost your stats permanently, or some of your stats actually permanently. Armor weed, and these especially, something like booseberry, armor weed, they actually give you a uh, plus one on some items. You might not want to use or eat all of them uh, all at once, because you can make the potions, of course, with, with alchemy, which are better. Brain weed. Those are actually kind of valuable, so don't. I'll screw those up. Magic root. Healing plant. Mana, mana plant. Armor weed. Oh, King Sorrel. King Sorrel. You need those because, yeah, King Sorrel actually allows you to make permanent potions. Look at that. Scavenger. Hold oh, the damage. Ooh. Yeah, you really have to be careful. I'm playing this without updates, so animals can actually stun lock you very easily. So you can actually be raped by the smallest little animal if it stun locks you. There we go. You just saw how much damage I took from those scavengers. Also, a little bit of my poor fighting. I really have to. Uh, yeah, I really have to get back into the mechanics of the game because yeah I'm not that good anymore pro uh, basically whoops yeah, I'm gonna attack it with a torch so much sweet what there we go basically as I said mash and click the buttons work nice plant grows in a rock whoops there we go Point blank. There we go. Go away. 
Well, that looked like a fucking pink cushion right now. There we go. Oh, another one of those things. Does it already hate me? Now it will. Screw you! Aha! Actually, the fighting is kind of floaty. The fighting system is really like you're brushing against something instead of really, uh, really fighting hard. Goblin berries. Oops. There we go. Healing plants. Hey, who's that? We have found someone. And first I have to loot, because I'm a real loot whore. Here we go. Lolly -lo. Jump for joy. Uh oh, yeah. Sorry, mate. First I have to take the wild berry. With what? Well, how about a saw? Idiot. Here we go. Lester! Oh god, pirates. Well, when aren't zombies coming? Oh, that's convenient. Hmm. Here you can bake your food. Ta -ta. Nice. Food the post. Make some. Mm, bake some mate. Alright, let's put it in the hot bar. If I can find any weapons, armor, magic, food, and potions. Got some ham, but also got raw meat. Eat it. Nom. There we go. Nope. A chest. Actually, sleeping heals you. So, yeah. There's always enough to do in this world, there's always enough stuff to loot, so, yeah. La -da -da -da. And a chest. Terror. Tame animal scroll and a heal other scroll. And booze. So good. Whoops. Morning, you. Alright, now it's my turn to go back to the village. What the hell was that? All right, let's go. Up this beautiful mountain path. With my beautiful King Sorel. Even more. Wow. It's actually supposed to be quite rare. <sighs> beautiful landscape. Dead guy. Oh, well, apparently that's something I've already done. See, this is the kind of things I was talking about that's unfinished and it's not really, yeah, well, yeah. How the hell does he... of Mitana, yada yada yada, sorry, click that accidentally. Okay. Oh yeah, by the way, he's a fire mage. Okay, the other thing is, <coughs> Gothic 1 and Gothic 2 used a rune system, 
uh, a magic spell was embedded in a rune, you could create a rune, or at least in Gothic 2 you could, and you could use that with mana and the necessary skills of the circles of magic to cast uh, those spells, which in my idea was a great system. Now they killed the rune magic system as a story device and just let the old uh, ancient true magic come back to life so they could actually have skill trees in... Yeah, skill trees. Yay. I would like to learn some magic. Okay, so I'm shipped off. The other guy says, screw you, I'm going south. He says, screw you, I'll search for myself, but thanks for the offer. Let's see what Gorn has to say. <laughs> well, that's kind of positive. I bet they're not all dead yet. How the hell does he know that? I had a talk with that guy, he said Red Ducts in the woods with the wolves, and all of a sudden he's like, okay, I know where it is. Alright, so, he's the gopher again. Nice axe, by the way. Yep. With a beautiful jumping mechanics. I'm fly. I wanna fly like an eagle. See you later. Bah. Nonsense. You should stop looting. Another one. Another one of those things. Berries. Du -du 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 -du. So, yeah, you can probably, he probably smelled them from a distance away. They don't wash very often, I guess. Hello, iron stem. More healing plants. Nice force, by the way. I actually also played the successor to this, Gothic 4, which is, in my eyes, it's a nice game, but it's very linear, so it's not really, really that nice. Look at that, dead guy. Wow. He had a joint and a strengthening potion. And something else, cure weakness or something, I don't know. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, look at that, there's another village. Let's see on the map where it is. M. I'm looking at Cape Dunn. Good. That would be nice. Dear. Oh dear! I dear you. Alright guys, so we have found Reddick. I'm gonna cut the episode here, and next time we're going to have a whole loot through of Reddick. Oh yes! Thank you for watching, like, favorite, and subscribe if you enjoyed, and if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and it was Xeran with XZ Gaming.